Hi, I'm Jilly Bean Fitzhenry. Welcome to another one of my acrylic painting tutorials. Today I'm going to show you how I do my Be Grateful gnome pattern. And I'm going to start out by just showing you the sunflower and the plaid and the bees for today. And I've done this in a smaller version so that it's a little quicker to do, but it's using the same pattern and then just kind of placing the elements in different areas. Now all of my pattern packets are available on my website www.jillybean.net and they're available either as a printed version or a download. Also, I would really appreciate it if you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jilly Bean Fitzhenry, and give me a like. I'm going to show you how to get started on this project, Be Grateful Gnome. But first, let me show you what you're going to get in your pattern packet when you order it on my website. Uh, you get a finished photo of the project, and you get lots of step-by-step photos to use for reference as you're painting, as well as complete instructions and full-size pattern. Um, the project itself is originally done on a tall pumpkin plaque, and that's available from CD Wood, and that is listed in the instructions, as well as the buffalo plaid stencil. So uh, I've got all that information in the pattern packet for you. I'm going to um, actually just use some of the elements of this piece and do it on a smaller wood piece just to save time. So I've chosen this wood piece to do um, samples of the uh, elements that are on the big one. This wood piece actually is from an, another company. It's from uh, Bear With Us Inc. I -N -C, uh, dot com. So uh, they have lots of fun wood pieces as well. Okay, so to start with, um, I base coated the entire piece with Laguna, which is a DecoArt Americana color. Any beautiful turquoise of your choice is going to be great. I measured off the bottom because I want to be able to use my buffalo plaid. And I wanted three rows. So whatever size buffalo plaid you end up getting, um, measure off three rows and then take a ruler and mark it off so that you can base coat the bottom. The bottom I base coated uh, originally with uh, medium white from the uh, DecoArt Tradition line. You could use uh, bleach sand, any kind of an off-white, because what I want is I want to put orange down here, and the orange is a very transparent color, and in order to get it to show up nicely, I need to be able to um, have a a lighter color underneath. Now I'm going to use the faux squirrel one inch uh, brush and I'm going to use some of the Paranon Orange to base in the bottom and I'll need a couple coats and I'll blow dry it in between. Um, so I try not to thin down the paint unless I have to. Sometimes it gets thick after it sits on my palette for a while. But really kind of plump up the brush. And I have a choice. I can either put a piece of tape across here so that it makes it easier for me to be able to measure, or this brush actually does have a nice chisel edge, so I can carefully just come across that area to get my line and then go ahead and fill in the rest with the orange. And I'll, I'll kind of brush it on in different directions, but then I'll smooth it all out in one direction afterwards. But you can see uh, orange is typically a very transparent color so that medium white underneath really does help a lot to get a better coverage and to brighten that color. Now I have to tell you on my original piece I used the opposite. I base coated this black. Well, then I had a nightmare because then I had, when I went to put my stencil on and stencil orange, 
I had to do two coats of the medium white before I could do the orange within the stencil. So I'm reversing it this time just to save problems. So uh, doing the orange, then I'll stencil with the black and it'll be much easier. Okay, so I'm going to blow dry this before I can do my stencil. We'll see if one coat is enough or not. Okay, that should be good. And um, did I tell you the, um, the first step was the Laguna with the Americana, couple coats, sand in between with the fine sandpaper. Just repeat that in case I forgot to tell you. All right, uh, now I'm gonna take my Buffalo plaid and I'm going to put it on right on that top edge there and what I want to do is I want to just kind of balance however much is left hanging over the edges of whatever the piece is that you're working on get that lined up and then I want to tape it down because I don't want it to move on me okay now the uh, stencil is um, Oh, five eighths or half inch little squares is what that is. Okay, so I'm going to use the Dynasty Stencil Pro brush to do my stenciling with. Absolutely love this brush. Uh, it comes in all different sizes. This one happens to be a three eighths. So either a three eighths or a half inch would work great for this. I'm going to use the um, black, and it can either be Americana or Traditions. And I'm just really plumping that brush up. Then I want to take and squeeze every bit of that paint out of my brush so that it's really dry. Okay, I don't want it wet. And, and do a little test even on your paper towel. Okay, now I want to do every other square of the solid squares. I want every other one black and every other one orange. So I'm going to let the one in the middle be the orange. So I'm going to do all the way across the bottom here with the black and I'm not pushing down just a very light circular motion and kind of reverse back and forth. A little goes a long way. So sometimes it, you, you think you're not getting anything off the brush and you really are. So you can take a little little peek after if you need to. In fact, let's do that. Let's take a little peek. See how nice that's coming off? Okay, so I'll keep going. I'll go all the way across. Get that entire bottom. Now, if I accidentally mess into some of the little orange squares that I wanted to leave, I can always go back and just touch those up individually. Okay, so here I've got the bottom area done. Okay, now let's, I'm going to reload this again. There again, I want to make sure that I wipe every bit of it off. Do a little test, make sure you got don't have residue. If you get um, too much paint, you're going to end up with ridges. Okay, so now I want to get just the striped ones in the middle and then go across the top so that I'll leave the solid ones in the middle orange, but I want to get the striped areas with the black. Very light circular motion and, you know, kind of reverse back and forth. Makes it more even. Don't want too much paint because I don't want ridges. Let's see how far I can go with this load. Sometimes I load it better than others, and I can make it go further. But it's really, I really had plumped up all that paint in the middle of the brush, not just on the bottom tips. 
and that's what allows me to go further with this color. Getting close. Alright, I need just a hair more. So just a little bit more on the brush. Pinch that off. Just a little circular motion. Don't push down. Now some of this is going to get covered up with design so I'm not going to worry too much about it because I can always come back and you know do a little retouch afterwards but let's take a peek. Let's see how we did. There we go. So, you know, I kind of like that little shadowy effect I got on the orange ones this time. I don't think I'm going to touch those up. In fact, I'm going to just make sure I get a little bit of shadow on some of the other areas. kind of like that. It makes it stand out better. Let's take a peek. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to leave that as is now. Okay, so I'll take off my stencil. And then I'm going to dry this really good. Um, I want to um, uh, make sure that it's nice and dry before I put my pattern on. So let me do that and I'll come right back. I have my pattern traced on now and what I did was I took the uh, pieces of the pattern and I cut them uh, and just used elements from the main design. So I did reduce it 90% just to make it fit on this wood piece a little better. So I took the edge of the um, sunflower and put that on and then I did trace with some white graphite. You can either use white graphite or gray graphite. Uh, put that under and then used a stylus to go ahead and trace the lines of the design. Okay, same thing with the bees. I cut them out and as well as the lettering, cut them out and place them where I wanted to. So I want you to understand that you can take a bigger design and just cut apart elements of it and create a whole new piece with it. So obviously this piece is not going to have the gnome on. This is just going to have the sunflower, the bees, and the grateful, and the plaid. And then uh, the next one that I do, I'll demonstrate uh, the gnome and the pumpkins. Uh, as part of the design. So uh, let's see. Now to begin with I'm going to introduce you to my two brushes that I have made that are Jelly Bean Sturdy Dancers. And there is a long pointed round on one end and a dome dry brush blender on the other. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I use this. I lay the color down with the pointed round, I flip it over and blend with the other side. So depending on what size piece you're working on, you'll flip between the large and the small uh, Jelly Bean Dirty Dancers. Okay, I'm going to start with the small one. Now on my flowers, because part of the design is going over the plaid, what I want to do is I want to undercoat those with some of the medium white. And this is the traditions that I've got. I plump up this brush and I want to use a lot of paint. I'm going to pull from the outside in towards the center. And it's okay if I have ridges they are going to lend themselves to the uh, veins in the petals themselves. So I'm not trying to totally flatten them out, but I do want to pull them in the direction of the petals, the way that they grow. And you can either pull from the tip towards the center or vice versa, whichever feels more comfortable. And so I'm going to get a nice coat of this on any of the petals that are under. Now depending on what color you've chosen for the top, you may want to do it on the top ones as well. And by pulling in 
the direction I'm not going to have to retrace my pattern on because I can see my brush marks because I don't want to have to retrace all of my petals again. And I've only added just a tiny touch of water, if, if any at all. Usually the paint is nice and creamy, fresh from the tube or the bottle, so I can use it as is. Whenever you add water, you're making the color a little bit more transparent. So I'm just going to quickly get all these little petals filled in. I've got some that go over the edge. And I always find it easier to pull towards myself, but everyone's a little bit different, so just try it both ways. See which feels more comfortable to you. I'm not trying to flatten or smooth out my strokes. I like that little ridge that I get in there as long as I pull in the direction of the petal. So I really plump that brush up with lots of paint. And it gets done a lot faster. And I decided I'm going to go ahead and do the ones on top too just to be consistent. That way my color is going to match better because they'll all start out with the same color underneath. Now, the same would be if you were to have any of the leaves that go over the plaid area. You may want to undercoat those with this color as well, just to get a better, brighter color for the leaves afterwards. Um, on this one, I left the bottom leaf off. The original design had another leaf coming out. I, I just cut that off and only did the two on top. When I get more done, I'll take a look and decide if I want a leaf coming in on top of the plaid here or just leave it as is. Okay, while I'm working on that color, this time what I'm going to do is I'm really going to water it down and I'm going to get part of the bees. So I really want to water that down. And that's the medium white. And I want to fill in with a wash, real transparent for the wings. Very, very transparent. And this is the medium white so that when I come back with my brighter white for highlights, there's going to be a difference in color. So just filling in. There again, it doesn't matter if it's smooth as long as you pull it in the direction uh, of the wings themselves. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the leaves next. I've used uh, Irish Moss, which is an Americana color. And in your instructions, I do uh, tell you how to mix it with traditions as well. There again, I'm pulling my strokes at an angle. I pull from the tip in towards the center. It's okay if I have ridges as long as I pull in the direction that the vein lines would be. I like to leave a little bit of a, a roughly edge on the outside or little points. But I'm just going to fill this in solid and then that'll have a chance to dry for when I want to come back and do the detail. But uh, see how you have the vein line here? That's the direction I'm pulling my strokes. So they're being pulled at an angle from the tips in towards the center. I don't want to pull them horizontal into towards the center because I want them to look like they're part of the vein lines to start with. Just kind of tuck it in around the petals. Kind of dab that in there. So when I can no longer pull a good stroke, I'll just kind of dab it in with the tip. The Jelly Bean Dirty Dancer has a nice fine tip on it, so I can do a lot of detail with it without having to switch to a liner brush. So we'll let those dry. Um, the center of the flower, I did not fill that in. However, right now I've got a great big flat black spot. 
I'm going to actually fill that center in with the background color just to be on the safe side, make sure that I get the color consistent. I'll take out a little bit of the Laguna and um, just quickly just kind of fill that in. It doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of dab it in. That's going to be a kind of a stippled area after anyway, so just kind of blot that in a little better. That'll that'll help. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just one kind of thick coat should be enough. And that'll help make a difference. Okay, while I'm waiting um, for some of those areas to dry, actually my petals are pretty dry, so I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, I'm going to use the uh, bright orange this time from the Americana. There again, you can see very easily how I could have mixed. This is Indian Yellow in Traditions. This is Paranon Orange in the Traditions. I could have mixed those two together to come up with my in-between color here. So I've kind of set my palette up from light to dark for the colors that I'm using. All of the back petals, and you can see that in your step-by-step -step here, all of the little back petals are going to be the bright orange, and then I'll use the Indian yellow for the front petals. So let's do the back petals first. There again, pull in the direction that the petals are growing so that the little vein lines, if you have any ridges, that's okay, but they'll be in the direction of the petals. So I'll get all of the back ones with this bright orange and I can do it in one coat now because I undercoated it with that medium white and that does help a lot. Okay, just turn it as I go. I'll get one more here. The ones going off the um, outer edge, um, you can kind of wait and see. You know, sometimes what I like to do is I just even will tuck in a few little strokes here and there. It just kind of helps to break it up. It's not necessarily, you can't really tell it's a petal, but it will help to break that up. Okay, then let's go to the front petals. Um, I'm really not adding water. I'm using it fresh and creamy right from the uh, either the bottle or the tube and I'm going to pull Indian Yellow. Indian Yellow has just a little touch of orange in it so if you're mixing your own yellow colors just add a little little tiny dab of orange into it to brighten the color just a little bit. And get those all filled in. Go ahead, turn my piece. And and I I could have switched to my larger brush uh, to fill these petals in. But honestly, I like the smaller one um, a lot of times because I do get those brush marks which, which are really going to help um, give the petals more dimension because I've got that little bit of a, a ridge going in the petal. It makes them look more dimensional. I, I just think that when you totally flatten all the color out, it makes the whole piece look flat. So I have a tendency to use a lot of paint. Okay, so I'm going to rinse that out. Uh, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, body of the bee. Uh, that is also going to be the Indian yellow to start with. And I'll just go ahead and kind of dab that in. And I don't mind that there's, I'm just using the tip, I don't mind that there might be a little hint of the turquoise showing through afterwards um, because that'll just kind of lend itself to some of the shadows. But I'm just tapping with the tip of this brush. I want it to be textured. 
So I've got there again quite a bit of paint on my brush. I'm going to ignore the eyes. I'll put those back in afterwards. So just dabbing in. Getting the the body, the tail. This is a honeybee, by the way, not a wasp. I like honeybees. I don't like wasps. They're not nice to me. So we'll get all of that dabbed in. And one coat should be fine if you do it thick enough. Okay, then um, let's go back to, well, let's do the leaves because they're underneath. And so let's go ahead and, and get those next. Um, the leaves, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, where I want my vein lines in. Now I'm going to start using a little bit of extender blending medium. And that's in the traditions. And I'm going to put it in a little cup. Now what this does is it gives me more time to blend. And I use it a couple different ways. So I'm going to show you, um, first of all, sometimes I'll pre-wet the whole thing with extender. But to start with, I really don't think I'm going to need to do that. This is a pretty little area. So I'm going to take, and I want the veins to be smaller, so I'm going to take some of the Irish uh, moss. And I'm going to add... I'm going to lighten that up. Let's see. I'm trying to remember what I did the first time without looking at my instructions. Um, put a little white in there. Okay. And instead of wet wetting the whole thing, I'm just going to take a little dab of extender and mix it in there so that it'll be loose. Okay, then I'm also going to take the other end of the brush, dip it in the extender, and then wipe it all off on the paper towel. Now it seems like there's nothing in there, but there really is, and that's going to help me with my blending. So when I go to put on my um, vein lines, I'm just going to draw a thin line down the center to start with, and some lines coming out on each side. Okay, then I'm going to flip the brush around, and I'm going to just kind of soften one edge and kind of pull that tip out, just soften that tip so that kind of disappears. So just pick a side that you want to soften and it makes it look a little bit more like a ridge. Now depending on your uh, weather and how much humidity that you have, you may need more or less extender. You're going to have to kind of play with it because sometimes I need a little bit more when I go teach a seminar and sometimes a little less. So you've got to adapt to your environment. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other leaf. Line in the middle first. And if you're a little slower painter, stop and do that one first. Just go ahead and soften one side. Okay, in between time, I'm going to take and clean off that blender side of the brush on my paper towel just by going in a little circle to get the extra paint off of there. And let's see, let's get a couple of vein lines coming out. And soften one side, kind of soften the tip, just kind of dab, just to make that kind of blend right down in. Get the extra off, roll it on my towel. Okay. Then I'm going to, the next step is I'm going to use this same color, but this time I'm going to add some highlights. So when you look at your step-by-step, -step, what I've done is one side I've added it along the edge, the other side I put it in the middle, um, just because I'm not really following a, a realistic um, design. I'm just kind of having fun playing, so I'm going to just set this color in right where I want it to be. And then I come and I just catch that inside edge and soften it. And 
Okay, so there again, I didn't have to, because it's a smaller piece, I didn't have to pre-wet, but I could have. Um, if you need to blend a little more, maybe sometimes all you need is just a little more extender on the blender side of the brush, but wipe it all off, and that'll kind of reactivate your area as well. Okay, so the other side of the leaf, I'm going to go in the middle, and I'm going to draw this. Now, you notice I didn't pull it straight down. I'm going at the angle, and I'm putting that color in there nice and solid where I want the highlight. And then I'm carefully just going to catch the outer edge. I don't want to go in the middle where all that nice color is. Catch the outer edge on both sides. And it just melts it down in. Just a soft, soft little kind of either a tap or a stroke. Just gently. Now, if you wipe too much away, go ahead and put some more back in and try it again. Uh, same thing with the other leaf. Now, I, I see on my original, I flipped it, but I'm going to be consistent this time. I'm going to just put it on the outer edge on the same side as I did the first one. And then just catch that inside edge. Just kind of soften it down in. And I, I do use the um, Traditions Extender Blending Medium for both the Americana as well as the Traditions Paint. So, because the Irish Moss is an Americana and you see it's working just fine. Put some highlight through the center of the leaf. Flip my brush over. Just gently catch. I'm not scrubbing. I'm not pouncing. I'm just gently, gently catching that inside edge and then the same on the other side so that way I have a center highlight. Now those of you that don't like to float color try this I think you're gonna love it. This is a much easier way of doing shading and highlighting if you are not used to being able to get that color to float right. In between colors I do rinse it in water but now I'm going to make sure I dip that round brush into extender and wipe it all off because I don't want water in the brush if I'm going to be blending with extender. Just to be sure that my um, blender side is clean, I dip it in the blender, extender blending medium, and wipe it all off on the towel going in a circle. Okay, I'm going to use the medium green with a little touch of extender in it for my shadow color now and that's a tradition color there again any really bright a little bit deeper green is going to be just fine okay so I've thinned it a little bit with extender okay now I'm going to lay in the uh, shadow areas so on um, the shadow areas the edge that I did, the center highlight, I'm going to do the outer edge of that for the shadow. The opposite side I do inside next to the center vein. So opposite of what I highlighted. So whichever side seems easier to do. I'm going to turn it upside down. I think it's a little bit easier. Okay, so I want to go next to the center vein. And if you're and see how I'm not going through the vein. I'm just kind of tucking it in and then flip the brush over and just catch that where I left off so that it's just deeper towards that center vein. Okay, the other side, I'm just going to pull it, little dabs right along that outer edge and then just carefully catch the inside edge to soften it. It's almost like you've just kind of outlined the outer edge, but being able to soften it, it doesn't look like it's outlined. Okay, and I'm going to, let's see, flip this back. Now I'll keep it the same way. Same thing. I'm going to do the same on the bigger leaf. Lay it in skipping where those vein lines are. Tuck it in next to the, I'll get a little back here too, tuck it in next to the petals. Flip the brush over. Just catch the edge where I stopped. 
Now, if I go all the way in to, to, to where the vein line is, then I'm going to be removing color, and I want that to stay nice and dark there. So I'm only catching the edge where I've left off. Okay, and I can feel my brush getting a little dry, so I, I get just a tiny tip of extender, but I don't stop and wash it. I just keep adding a little tiny tip of extender and then reloading the brush. And see, I've really pat all that color in there. I'm not just picking it up on the tip. I'm really filling the inside of the brush with color when I do this technique. Okay, and then do the same. Get a little bit of an outline on the outside edge. And catch that color, just soften it in. And I can always go back, I can let this dry, I can always go back and play with it and touch it up and do um, more on it at any time. Okay, so that's the leaves. Um, well, let's see, I might as well go ahead and get the final touches on the leaves as long as we're working on it. Uh, one more step on the leaves would be to add a final highlight. Um, so this time I want an even lighter color, so I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and white together, and I'm going to highlight a few of the little tips and maybe a little bit in the center of the vein lines. So let's get uh, some yellow and some white and a little touch of the green, just so that it's a pale, kind of a warm, pale gr yellowish green color. Little touch of extender in there. Okay, too much extender is going to make it transparent, so just be careful. All right, so I'm going to definitely add some on the tip right here. Lay that in nice and solid. Flip my brush over and just barely catch that bottom edge. I'm just going to get some of the very center vein lines, not the whole thing. Soften them a little bit. Maybe just a touch more on the tip. Get that a little bit brighter. I want it to pop forward a little more and I'll do a little bit on the other leaf as well. Let's get the top tip. Put a little bit in the center vein at the same time. Soften. And I can even put some little brighter in the center of a highlight area, or I could add some more to some of the edges. So maybe I decide I want a little bit, instead of the shadow, maybe I want a little bit of uh, lighter color on a couple spots on that outer edge and just soften it. And that's it for the leaves. Next I'm going to go to the petals and the flower. And for the um, top petals, I want to get a lighter color. So remember I started with the uh, Indian yellow, so I've got to go lighter than that. And I can do um, some yellow. The Hansa Yellow. Now the Hansa Yellow is a pretty transparent color, so I'm going to have to add a little touch of white into that. It'll be a little more opaque that way. And I'm going to add some extender in there. Okay, and I, because I've been using green on the uh, blender side of the brush, I want to make sure it's clean. So dip it in the extender and rub it off on the paper towel so that I'm sure all the green is out of there. Okay, uh, just adjust your, your white and your yellow. It needs to be able to show up on the color petal that you have. So if you need a little more, a little less, just kind of adjust it. I, I know I have an exact mix for you in the instructions, but I love to just kind of brush mix and play as I go along. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to outline the petal 
first, soften that so it doesn't look quite so outlined. And then I'm going to pull some little thin strokes in from the tip down in. Sometimes I can just leave them and sometimes I need to soften them a little bit. So if the very tips look kind of blunt, just kind of tap just gently, just to soften just those spots where you um, quit. Okay, so all the petals are going to be the same. We're just going to outline a little thicker up at the top there and then pull skinny as you pull in towards the center. Soften that inside edge. And then I'm going to pull some little lines in from the tip. Just really, really light touch. You can see that the tip is fine enough. If you don't put any pressure down, you can get like you would for um, a liner or a script brush. Just soften to where I stopped there. Now I could do it all at once and soften it. But sometimes skipping ahead, you end up blending away too much. So I do recommend that you outline first and then go back and do your lines in from the tip. So outline, flip the brush over. Oh, and by the way, one of the reasons I had um, this brush designed for me uh, from Dynasty is because when I was doing this blending method, I was constantly putting one brush in my mouth while I hurried up and blended with another brush. So you can do this with a, you know, a dried brush blender and a round brush, but this was just easier and faster being able to flip it back and forth to do my blending and get some little lines in the middle. Uh, when I clean my brushes, and this is true for any of the ones that I use for my acrylics, I use just regular dish soap that I have at the sink, soap and water, clean them off. And for the Dirty Dancer, because this is a double-ended, um, I know a lot of you put your brushes in you know, a cup or something. Um, first of all, the blender side is going to be the most sturdy side. So that would be the side I put down. You've got a couple options. Either coat it with some hair conditioner that you would use in your own hair. Um, and then let that dry because then that'll stiffen it. Um, or take a little straw and cut a little straw and then slip the little straw over it, tape it on. And then you can set it down into your into your uh, cup holder. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait and do the ones on the outside edge here after I get the first ones done to see how much I really want of this lighter color in there. So outlining, soften both sides, pull some little thin lines in. Soften where you left off if you need to. Sometimes you don't need to. Okay, now my brush is getting a little dry. I'm going to loosen it with extender and then fill it back up with my color. If it's not coming off the brush, you need a little bit more moisture. It's just that I use the extender instead of water when I'm doing the blending. If you live in a really dry area, like I said, you might need to moisten the petals first with a little extender before you do your blending. So you've just kind of play with it a little bit. And I'm going to soften those edges, pull some little lines in. Okay, now I still do want just a little hint some lighter lines coming in from this outer edge. So I will just 
add a few little strokes coming in. I don't want it to be solid there. Okay, then for the um, outer petals, there again, I want a lighter color to use on the tips. I'm going to be doing the same technique. So we started out with um, the orange. So let's use that bright orange and let's mix uh, a lighter version of that. Actually, probably can just pick up some of my other color here and mix it with the orange just so it's a lighter. You'll have exact mixes in your instructions, but anything lighter is going to work. Let's see, I'm going to soften that just real, just those inside tips. I want to keep it dark where it touches the other petals, so I don't want to go all the way in. Just soften. I'm not trying to totally flatten it. I want to be able to see little brush marks because that's what gives it the look of vein lines. Just catch those little tips. And just a little bit lighter in there, I think. Flip it over, soften. A little more on this last one over here. Go back up to the top. I don't want them to be as bright um, as the ones on top, so a little less uh, contrast on the ones that are underneath. All right, so I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, then um, I'm going to go ahead and start the uh, very center of the flower. Now, I'm going to actually use a rake brush. Um, this is the Dynasty Black Silver Rake. Okay, and it's uh, the quarter inch is the smallest, but what I like to do is I like to cut it right at the base and turn it into a 1 8 inch brush. And let me just show you how I do that. These are inexpensive brushes, so I do not mind cutting them myself. Okay, so I take a sharp scissors and right at the ferrule, I cut off a little bit on each side, and then I'm going to get a smaller brush for working on little ornaments and smaller pieces. Um, but I love these because they're a little bit stiffer um, bristle, and so they work really nicely. I'm just going to use water this time, and I'm going to start out with burnt sienna and just thin it with a little bit of water. I don't want it transparent. I want to be able to see my color, but I want it loose. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to, I feel I got a lot up at the ferrule there, so I'm just going to blot some of that off. I want it at the tip. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull in little strokes going all the way around my center. I can pull either from the inside out, outside in, whichever feels more comfortable. But I'll go all the way around. I don't mind if a little bit of the blue is showing through. Don't make it solid, solid. So all the way around the flower. And then I'll start doing some more, do another row. And just keep going all the way around till it's all filled in. But not solid, solid. You want to be able to see the little strokes. Okay, and then that's the beginning of the center. Okay, while that's drying, I will go ahead and add some more highlights to some of the outer petals. So I'll go back to my uh, Jelly Bean Dirty Dancer. This time I'm going to use white, thin it with some extender, and I'm going to go back over some of the tips that I want to pop forward a little bit more. So let's start. Uh, let's start with this one right here. I'm I'm not going to go in as far this time. It stays closer to the edge. There again, you may or may not have to blend it depending on how fine of a stroke 
you can get when you're pulling in on the edges. But I want that outer tip to be a nice bright white. Don't pull in as far as you did with your lighter yellow color. Sometimes I do a little bit on an edge, but maybe not both edges. Maybe just pick an edge, that way they'll look like they're separating from each other a little bit better. And if you need to, you know, go ahead and soften. If you get too blunt of a, a tip anywhere, just carefully soften. Don't scrub. Get a little bit more here. Let's see what other ones do I want. I'll do this one here. Pull in some little fine lines from the tips. Those will help those to pop forward. Maybe, let's see, do I have one up on the green? Yeah, one up here. Pull those in. Light little strokes. And let's get this one too. A little bit. So not all of them need to have it come down the edge. Some of them are definitely just the very tip. Get a little bit more. Let's do one more down here. And just soften a little bit. If they start looking too outline-y, go ahead and just soften them with the blender side of the brush a little bit. I'm not going to put any more on the back petals. I'm going to leave those as is. So sometimes when you paint, the color fades. If it does, you know, lighten it a little bit more, add a little more to it. But I'm going to leave mine on this one. Okay, then I'm going to add some shadow in some of the flowers. And I'm going to use, this is called Yellow Deep in the traditions. Um, you could use a uh, like a raw sienna and maybe um, a little touch of burnt sienna mixed together if you're using the Americana. And there again, I'm going to add some extender in there. This time I'm going to pull little lines from the inside um, edge of the petals. So at the base of the petals. And I can probably do a few of them at a time. You're going to get used to this and be able to do a few more. Until you do, do one at a time. But as you get used to the technique, you can go a little further before you have to blend. So tuck that color in there and just soften where I stopped. You wipe too much out, go back, add some more in. I'm not going all the way up, but I want to get the base a little bit darker. This is a nice transparent color, so it doesn't cover up all of your other colors, and that's why I like it, because it is transparent. There's times a transparent color works to your advantage so that it tucks it in. Um, if you need a little bit more also in your outer petals, you certainly could use this in the outer petals too. So if you need to deepen those a little bit, go ahead and tuck some in at the base of those to help get a little bit darker between. Just in that little V area where it tucks under the yellow petals. And it, because it's transparent, sometimes I need to blend it, sometimes I don't. Just depends on your, your brush stroke. Okay. All right, then let's go back to the center again. Uh, so in the center, I want to use my Indian Yellow and my rake brush 
and I'm not really thinning it this time. I'm going to use it a little bit thicker, but I want to be able to see those individual little tips on the brush. Okay, so don't get it thick on the tips. You want to make sure you pat the extra off of the tips, but I want a lot of paint on. Now I'm going to come in away from the edge, and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go all the way around and make a little, little circle and leave some of that burnt sienna showing on the outer edge. But because this is a transparent color, that's one of the reasons I'm using it full strength and not diluting it. Okay, and it just kind of looks like it's a little bit of a stippled area in there. Okay, then I'm going to come back with a lighter color on top of that. So we did this so that we can come back to yellow, but yellow by itself is a little too transparent, so I'm going to mix the yellow and the the white together. There again, you may not need to thin that if it's creamy. I'm going to get the extra off by the ferrule, but I want I want more on the tip, but not a glob on the tip. So not a glob, okay? Now I'm going to come right in the middle, just kind of tap that in, going around. I'm going to leave a hole this time in the center. Just kind of tap that in. Now, if I feel like I'm losing too much of my Indian yellow, I'll come back and tap a little bit around the outer edge again. I'm not blending anything. I'm just making little strokes. Okay. And I'm going to let that dry. Okay, let's go back to the petals again. I want these petals to be brighter one more time. So this time I'm going to go back to my Paranon Orange and I'm going to thin that with Extender. So my really bright orange. And if I remember right, I think um, Scarlet in Americana is a really good color to use for this. Okay, so now I want to deepen some of the base again and make it, it'll just perk it up, and make it a little bit brighter color in there. Let's see if I'm getting that on camera or not. It's kind of shiny. Yeah, let's zoom in just a little bit. see that. So you can see that orange in the middle. I'm just pulling little strokes and then I can soften that where I stopped. Just a gentle little tap. But a little, real bold right at the base where it touches the center. Don't pull too far out. Nice bright color right at the base. Really helps to perk it up and it helps to tie it in with your plaid because it helps uh, pull that those two colors together. Get a little bit on all the top petals there. Just kind of dab it in. Doesn't need to be perfect. They can each be a little different. And if you need to go back, you know, and clean up any edges afterwards, you sure can, you know, with some of your, you know, lighter yellow or your white, whatever you need to do, you can certainly do that. Okay, then let's go back to our center. I want one more highlight on the center 
and that's going to be white. So I'll get white on the tip of my little rake brush here and I'm just going to get little tiny white just in a little curved area on one side. Okay. And then I decided I wanted the center a little bit brighter too. So you could either use, well, I'm going to use the orange, I think. I'm going to use the orange. I'm just going to tap. That'll just brighten that center a little bit. Tap that in there. Yeah, that worked. Okay. Um, so that's the flower and the leaves. Let's finish off the bees. Okay, on the bees, I want to get a brighter white on the wings, so I'm going to use my Dirty Dancer and I'm going to pull this a little more into the frame here. Okay, so a little touch of extender into the titanium white, your brightest white. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline those rounded edges, okay, and then a thin line coming down the side. And if you feel more comfortable using a liner brush, you sure could, and then just soften. Now, I forgot to clean my brush. I'm getting a little orange off of there, so I've got to stop clean my, my blender side, dip it in extender, wipe it on my towel, and I'm just going to gently kind of get rid of that. And I'll just blend in. There we go. Soften the inside edge. So I've got a brighter white on the outside edge now. Soften that inside edge so it no longer looks outlined. But I don't want the wings totally filled in. I want them to be transparent. Okay, now here I've got a little on the outside. I can actually just take the blender side of the brush and it's almost like an eraser. Just erase where I had extra paint coming off of the area I didn't want it in. Do the other wings. Outline the edges. Soften. Just carefully catch that inside edge. Do that on both. Okay, flip the brush, soften the edge. You know, it's almost like you're working with an oil, but it's acrylic, and then it'll dry faster. So that's why I like this technique. Just erase a little bit of a extra that got outside the wing there. Okay, and I can either use extender or I can use water in a brush to do that and get rid of that excess. Okay, um, then for inside um, the middle of the bee, I'm going to tap in uh, the black, well, actually I'm going to tap in some lighter color first, I think. Let's do that first. So I want a lighter color in the center, all the center areas. So let's go ahead and use um, some yellow and some white. Get a lighter color because remember we use the uh, Indian yellow. So just the tip of my uh, brush here. And I'm just going to I'm just going to tap it in. I don't want it solid. I want it a little more like a stippled look. Tap it in the center areas. Do that on both of the bees. And I think I got a little more towards the top side on this one bee that's a little bit more of a three-quarter view. So let's get a little more on that top edge. And the other one was in the middle. 
Okay, you get too carried away, go ahead and tap some of the Indian yellow um, around the edges again. Okay, that now I'm going to put my black and there again, use the same brush. Just get a little bit on the tip. No extender this time, you know, when you're doing this stage, because I'm not really blending it. Definitely want to start at the tail. Okay, just kind of tap it in. Let it be fuzzy. Okay, and then however many stripes, I know there's probably a certain number on the bees, but however many stripes you can get, no one's going to count them. And just create some black stripes. You want at least three black. Technically, I think there's four, but I'm not a bee expert, so. And I'm going to leave the body. Just want to do the, the tail part. There again, tap that in. Get those stripes. Yeah, this one needs four. Okay. Um, I'm going to have some burnt sienna in the body part. Uh, the bee that I was looking at as a reference, this body part here was actually a little bit darker in the center, so I'm just going to tap a little bit in, dividing the head from the body, and right in on top of where I had that yellow for the highlight, but just kind of tap to divide the two. Okay, and then Let's get, uh, so let's go ahead and, and stick with the burnt sienna. Let's do the legs. The legs, um, I'm going to thin that burnt sienna with some water because I just want little individual, kind of like, it's almost like they're little teardrop shapes. And I want each leg to have two sections. So kind of a fat and then skinny. Fat and skinny. Let's see that has on the back here too. Okay, and we'll get the other one. So this is the burnt sienna. I'm making two little two little strokes for the sections of the legs. And let's see there's two more up here that I need to get. Okay, then uh, the tips of those legs is just a tiny, tiny little black line. And this time I am going to switch to my little, um, uh, my little, little brush here. I got a little piece of fuzz on this one. I'm going to. Pull that off. It's better. Uh, my little script brush. Okay, and just add a, a little tiny little spot coming out, little little foot coming out on the ends of each of those little legs. And we want to add some eyes. Now, this one um, where you're seeing kind of flat, we're going to add two ovals. And then there's some little antenna. They can be made with the black also. 
And this other one um, that I had been looking at, I could only see the one, but I'm tempted to put just a little half of one on the other side. I think it looks better. Okay, so we've got the eyes, we've got the antennas. Um, for the um, veins in the wings, I don't want them solid black, so I'm just going to mix some black and some white for like a dark gray, add a little bit of water, thin that down, and use my script brush. This is, you can use either a 20 odd or a 10 odd. They're both about the same. This is the black gold. I love the liners in the black gold. Okay, so for the wings, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw like right in the middle here. I'm going to draw, it's almost like a little you know, oval teardrop. And then from there, I'm going to pull out like a little Y shape to create the little vein lines. I'm not going to outline the edges. I just want this in the middle. So a little bit of a round and then create like a Y. Some of them you can only see straight lines. Not enough room for the Y. There again, kind of an oval. Pull out like a little Y shape. Just to give the impression that there's some veins in there. Okay, then inside the eyes, I add a little teeny dot of white for a highlight. Tiny, tiny. Just the little tip of the, the brush to do that. Um, if you, you know, needed to outline your wings again, if you felt they needed a little bit of touch-up, you certainly could do that. Just make sure you put extender, extender in there in order to... Um, make them smooth. I'm going to uh, show you the lettering real quick. Now, I did do the, the lettering originally just with the 20 aught, but I gotta show you another brush that is one of my favorites uh, for doing lettering, and it is the Dynasty Faux Squirrel. It's a rigger. And what I like about it is when you're doing your lettering, it's, it's like a script, however, if you pinch this out, you're going to see that you've got a little bit more of a flat edge as opposed to a pointy tip, and it makes it easier to do the lettering. So I'm going to use that and some black and just some water and uh, fill that up, fill the brush up with that. I've got... and. I've got this already um, kind of in here, but you could make your own lettering. But see, I can get a nice even width then with this one using the rigger. You know, and go ahead and turn your piece if you need to. And I don't try to just go all the way around. I do it in sections and connect. Lots of fluid paint. Really get that tucked in there. There again, like I said, I don't try to do it in one long stroke like you would if you were writing. I'm doing it in sections. It just is easier. And I gotta tell you, on my original, I gotta fess up on my original one, I misspelled grateful. Didn't catch it till it was all done. So this is the correct spelling. <laughs> the pattern has the correct spelling. I have to retouch up my original, get it spelt right. Lots of fluid paint. Let's keep reloading. And 
And I really think it's fun to just sometimes use your own version of the lettering. Um, a lot of times I will um, print mine out. I'll just, you know, take a, you know, Word document or whatever and just print out a style of lettering to get me started for, you know, uh, figuring out where I want it to be positioned. But I really like to see people's, you know, little touch of their own little lettering. So just take a chalk pencil and draw it out where you want your letters to be. And I could have made, you know, some of the areas uh, thin or fat, you know, had it vary, but I wanted, it, wanted them all pretty much the same with most of this. I decided to add a few more leaves to the design to help balance it out, give it just a little bit more color, um, and also uh, to paint the very top of the piece here. A couple little things, so and all these leaves are done basically the same as the first ones. I just wanted to get a little bit more color. Um, the very top um, lacy part of the frame I ended up base coating with the uh, Indian yellow, but I'm going to show you, um, get my brush clean here first. I'm going to show you, I'm going to add some more color. I'll use the Paranon Orange, thin it with some extender. I'm going to add some color in, rouge it into the edges a little bit. So like at the bottom of the scroll here, I'll add some of the darker orange and then flip my brush and just kind of rouge that in kind of in a circular motion just to get that blended at the bottom. Soft touch though. Get a little bit of a accent color going in there. So all across the bottom there, do each scroll. Just catch where I stopped off. Kind of a little circular motion just to kind of rouge it in. That's an easy way of getting some more shadows or highlights in, is just kind of rouge that in. Get a little more color in there. It needed some more color. So all the way across the bottom, just kind of, it's like I'm erasing that extra little line. Okay, and you can decide, do you want to, you know, I mean, do you want to accent the, the very top of the design also you could. I could like follow through with the curve there, maybe get some across the bottom of that top section. And there again, just kind of rouge it in where I left off. And I'm just gonna let that be, but I think that helps bring it a little bit more color. Uh, one other thing that um, I forgot to do on the little legs of the bee is to get just a little teeny dab of the Indian yellow in each leg. I know that they're tiny. It could go in the middle, it could go on an edge, just barely catch. It helps to make them look a little bit more dimensional. So wherever you can get that to fit, and you could certainly switch to your liner brush. I'm just using the tip of my Jelly Bean Dirty Dancer, but your liner brush, if that's easier, go ahead, do that. I didn't thin it down. I didn't add any extender. It's just the paint full strength uh, in there. Otherwise, I think I am going to call it done. I hope you've enjoyed my little tutorial on my Be Grateful Gnome and doing the little sunflowers and the plaid stenciling. And I would like to invite you to join my Facebook group, Dynasty Painting Friends. Uh, please be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd very much appreciate it. Until next time, thank you so much.